All right, this video is talking about velocity time graphs, and at the end we'll briefly touch on acceleration time graphs and jerk time graphs. All right, velocity time graphs simply map changes in speed or, and or direction of an object as time progresses. Um, again, just like a position time graph, it's only in quadrants one and four. Constant velocity is a horizontal line. Changing velocity is a line with a slope, and rapidly changing velocities will be some kind of a curved line. All right, so let's look at um, position time graphs versus velocity time graphs for various um, conditions. So if you're standing in one place, on a position time graph, it's a horizontal line at that position. So in this case, um, three meters. All right, and then on the other side, because he's standing in one position, there is no velocity, so here it's going to be a horizontal line for the same time interval at zero. All right, position time graph, so he's moving at a constant speed, um, traveling uh, between zero and three meters in three minutes. Um, so the slope of a position time graph gives you your the velocity. So we should be looking at a line at one meter per minute. All right, so and that's what we've got. We've got a horizontal line um, at one meter per minute. Okay, and then here we have a position time graph where you have a changing velocity, in this case an increasing velocity, and the um, if you remember, you take slopes of the um, time at the at, at tangent line segments in order to find the values on the velocity time graph, and those give you those points right there, and then you have a straight line that goes through them. So a curved line on a position time graph is going to look like a, a straight line on a velocity time graph, where, but the, the, the line is going to have some kind of a slope, positive or negative. All right, now acceleration, you have instantaneous acceleration, and it's, it's pretty um, good because you find ex instantaneous acceleration the same way you find velocity on a position time graph. So that means you're taking the slope of line segments or slope of a tangent line on a curved graph. All right, so average acceleration, you find the change in velocity, divide it by the change in time. Now remember, there is no scalar equivalent to acceleration. So again, delta V over delta T. So here we have two graphs. Um, one is a um, constant, um, constant acceleration, and the other is a changing acceleration. So for the first one, I'm going to take the slope of the blue line segment which gives me an acceleration of negative four meters per second squared. And then on the curved section, I'm just going to take a simple straight line, take a tangent line to, to, a, to a given point. In this point, it's about 0.5 um, seconds. So then um, I find two points on there. One is two and one, or one comma two. The other is um, about 0.4 and one. So that gives me an, uh, an acceleration at that particular point of plus 3.33 meters per second squared, if assuming that the, the units were meters and seconds, or meters per second and seconds. Now, so now here, find the accelerations for the time for between at 0.5 minutes, 2.5 minutes, and 5.7 minutes, and the average acceleration for the entire period. All right, so you're going to pause the video now, make your calculations, and then you'll be able to see the answers. All right, so there are your three accelerations. You've got zero centimeters per second, centimeters per minute squared. Then you have um, negative one centimeters per minute squared and plus five centimeters per minute squared. And then down at the whole thing, you have a negative one centimeter per minute is your change in velocity divided by eight, which is negative 0.125 centimeters per minute squared. So again, just finding slope of line segments or slopes of tangent lines, just like you did in uh, position time graphs. All right, now finding displacement on a velocity time graph 
is a little bit different. So velocity, of course, is the rate at which displacement changes. So that's v equals delta x over delta t, which we talked about in the previous video. But if you rearrange that, you get delta x equals v delta t. Now, remember, area is equal to base times height. Now, and on a velocity time graph, you have velocity on the y-axis and you have time on the x-axis. So in that case, it is simple. And if so, if velocity is your if time is your base and velocity is your height, it's simply the area between the line or curve and the x-axis. All right. So here we have a velocity time graph, and we're going to go through an example of sol of finding the um, the displacement and distance. So in this case, you're going to find the areas. All right. So you have the the uh, blue triangle and if you're going to take the area of that now remember the area of a triangle is one half base times height you multiply so it's six minutes and the height is six meters per minute so the the uh, the minutes cancel and you end up with an area of 18 meters then you have the big lighter blue rectangle so area is base times height and then you get three minutes times six meters per minute. The minutes cancel. And again, you get 18 minutes. And then the orange, it's a one half base times height. The minutes cancel. And that gives you an area of nine minute meters. Then you have the, the blue triangle below the x axis. And that gives you negative nine meters. You get an area of negative 18 meters for the purple and then you have a big orange one over here or pinky orange and you get area of negative 18 meters there so that gives you the individual areas so from here we need to worry about finding the um, the total displacement total um, alright so we have our various areas right there then if we want to find displacement, you add them all together. And note that the, 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 the signs for the last three areas stay there, and we have a displacement of zero. Distance, remember you use the, the absolute value, so you have a displacement of 90 meters. All right, so average velocity is displacement divided by time. Average velocity is zero divided by 25 minutes, and of course anything to, you divide anything into zero, you still have zero meters per minute. And your average speed is distance divided by time. So that's 90 divided by 25, or 3.6 meters per minute. So again, you find the individual areas. Then you, um, you can use with triangles, rectangles, uh, trapezoids, any combination of that kind of um, formulas will help you find them you add the add all the displace all the individual displacements up with the signs to find displacement find a, the take the absolute value of all of the individual areas to find the dis distance and then you simply take total distance divided by total time to find average speed total displacement divided by time to find average velocity all right the acceleration of course is the slope so at 12 minutes, you need to find the slope of the line segment that, inter that intersects um, at 12 minutes. So that's negative 6 minus 6, or negative 12, divided by, negative, uh, by 15 minus 9. So it's negative 12 divided by 6, or negative 2 meters per minute squared. So we have instantaneous acceleration, average velocity, average speed, and displacement and distance slightly different than a position time graph but the same across the board now the the neat trick with this is that these same patterns follow for acceleration time graphs so if on an acceleration time graph if you want to find velocity you take the areas if you want to find the jerk you take um, you take if you want instantaneous jerk you take the slope of, the, of a line segment on an acceleration graph and if you want to find the average jerk, you take your, your change in acceleration and you divide it by the time interval. All right, so there are all of your answers. All right, so now here are the, here are the um, 
three area equations that we use um, just so you can see them and remind yourself. And again, it's just either one half change in velocity over change in time or change in velocity over change in time. All right, so here is a, an example problem for you to do. All right, you need to find the, um, the, the displacement. All right, so pause the video and get your answers and then we'll check them. All right, so now that you've got your answers, we're going to take air individual areas. We have the blue triangle, and that's simply 0 0.5 meters. Then we have the bit, then we have this area, the purple area down here, which is one half, which is base times height, and one meter. Now I can take the blue and the purple, and I could have treated it as a trapezoid and solved for the same way and would have gotten an area of 1.5. Now we have the big green triangle and I get 4 meters and then I have this yellow triangle at the end which gives me 1 meter. Okay, So now I'm going to find the individual um, displacements. Alright, so my displacement is 6.5 meters. My distance is 6.5 meters. Now that's because none of the values are below the x-axis. So when it's below the x-axis, that's when you get the, the difference. Average velocity, displacement divided by time, 1.63 meters per minute. Average speed, 1.63 meters per minute. Same distance, same displacement, same, same velocity, same speed. And then the acceleration at 3.5 minutes is negative 2 meters per minute squared. 